please, you know, uh, you came from United States. I really appreciate it, your time. And uh, you uh, give us very good honor to be here, you know, because the, uh, believe me, you know, almost one type of agency to operate the register all around the world. Especially when they heard the you know, uh, United States of Association. We really appreciate it, all of you, to be here. So please tell us, you know, because uh, COVID 19, you know, we never think, we never dream about it. Uh, this can be happen all around the world. So, so please tell us something and motivated us to be a great story. Thank you. Well, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, we do. You can hear me. Okay. So first, let me just say uh, to the honorable mayor, thank you to the mayor for joining this call today. Um, it's, it's a privilege to have and see your face. And I, I just want to start by talking about the personal relationship that I have with Turkey. Uh, Ten years ago, when I was named the CEO of United States Tour Operators Association, the first time I took a tour and I could choose I could choose any place in the world to go to, I went to Turkey. And I spent 10 days and Bodrum was part of that itinerary. It's an amazing destination. And the country itself and the people um, hold a very special place in my heart. And I look forward to continuing that relationship with all of my friends and family in Turkey because uh, it's extraordinary. So, you know, there are so many questions out there today about when can we start again uh, with travel and seeing friends and family, whether it's in Turkey or other places around the world. Uh, and I wish I had that crystal ball to tell you, um, but what I'll start with is to share with you that between my board of directors and a working group of my uh, tour operators, and I just talked with them yet late yesterday, they are indicating that over 50% of their customers have not canceled, they've delayed or postponed their travel to the fourth quarter of 2020 and to the first quarter of 2021. So they, they feel optimistic that you know, this isn't going to take two years, but we're going to see, you know, some decent numbers returning within, you know, the end of the, this year and the beginning of next year. So I, I think that's encouraging. Something that I think is also important to stress about the U.S. market is that we have become much more resilient as travelers. And it, sometimes I think it's unfortunate how that resiliency has been built because through 9-11, which I ran New York City's tourism during September 11th, uh, and then we see Mother Nature flexes her muscle. So our, our U.S. travelers have started to work through a new norm that, you know, we're going to face these kinds of issues, whether it's a pandemic or a terrorist attack, but we're, it's not going to stop us from traveling. So I, I think it's important for us to, to keep that in mind. So I've, I've done three surveys of my members. They remain confident about how the future is going to unfold through the end of this year, early next year. So I think the challenge for you, wherever you are in the world, and it's a challenge for me, is for us to start identifying protocols that you can express to your customers, that I can express to our customers, because we want them to have the confidence. We need to be able to say, we are doing X, we are doing Y, we are doing Z. But make sure that you are safe, and you will be healthy. And I think it's important for us to all think about, you know, what are those measures, what are those steps that we need to be taking to instill that confidence to travelers around the world. Now, I know one of the questions you asked was about um, airlines and when we might see um, capacity coming back, and I have no idea. 
<laughs> I would leave that question to our airline partners. Uh, I can just say Turkish Airlines has been a great partner to USTOA, um, but I, that's a business decision that they have to make. And, and I, don't, I don't know. Um, as far as suggestions, I think um, we need to, sorry, sorry. Um, we also have to talk about the positioning of um, the message. And I think there's a real interest in what we're seeing from our consumer database about destinations that can show them through storytelling um, nature and being able to be outside maybe have a little distancing. So I, I think um, the messaging moving forward will be key, as will be the timing. And, you know, we just released yesterday uh, some results from a survey that we did of 160 different destinations from around the world. And some are looking at second, third quarter as far as getting back into marketing and, and telling the story that they have to, to share. Uh, others are waiting until more the fourth quarter. I think like, like any governmental body, these are individual decisions that everyone has to make, whether you're the mayor or you're a DMO representing a destination. Uh, but I think we're gonna start seeing, you know, within a month or so, more and more communication about when it's the right time to travel. This is how you will travel in the future. And we want you to think about Turkey, think about where you're located. Um, and, and, and my job is to help make that happen on behalf of you know, our global family. So um, I just, I am honored to be invited uh, as part of this conversation. I think this is one of the silver lining that comes from pandemic is that this type of conversation we should be able to do more frequently. And we've never done that in the past, uh, but it's something that uh, is helpful. It's reassuring. And uh, you know, we're all in this together. <laughs> and I want to make sure the USTOA does its part to help Bodrum and Turkey and all the other destinations around the country. So I'm happy to take any questions, or I know you have other speakers, so I, I will shut up for now and, and turn it back to you. Thank you. I mean, the, let me, uh, let me uh, tell the Bodrum mayor, you know. Uh, Başkanım, uh, Mr. Terry Danja Bodrum'a gelmiş çok. Sesini, ben mi kapattım acaba? Başkanım sesin geliyor mu? Evet geliyor açtım şimdi. Sizi. Başkanım Mr. Terry daha önce Bodrum'a gelmiş. Bodrum'u çok beğenmiş. Sizin aracınıza Mr. Terry Bodrum'a davet edelim. Kendisini misafir edelim. Ne dersiniz? Okay. Uh, Mr. Terry I will invite you to Bodrum when uh, this epidemic is over. I, I'll be there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining with us. It's time for solidarity, especially at our industry, because tourism industry is number one affected industry in this pandemic uh, period. So uh, every uh, every uh, talk, every motivation is very precious, very valuable nowadays. Thank you very much for joining us. Happy to. Thank you. Başkanım, siz soru sormak istiyor. Soru sormak istiyor var mı arkadaşlar burada? Mr. Terry'e. Terry, I would like to maybe ask you one question, you know. 
Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion, you know, uh, for our sector? Yeah. Uh, I'm not asking about the question about the flight, as you say, you know, I attack and, you know, other yeah. things. You know, do you think uh, all tour operators or hotels, do you think we should update, uh, you know, to update our cancellation policies, you know, or we should work more brand, uh, you know, for branding? Uh, what's your opinion, you know, because the yeah. previous, uh, I don't think the previous uh, tense condition will work anymore. So I just want to make sure I understood the question, but it's kind of about cancellation policies Correct. and terms and conditions. So I think, you know, as as a tourism family, we all need to kind of be a little more flexible in this kind of environment. Uh, I know we do an annual conference later this year. The hotel is willing to work with us on determining what the appropriate timing and rates I think I, I think we just need to be sensitive to long-term relationships. Short term, it's going to be tough, but we need to look at it from a long term. If we want to maintain this business partner, we're going to have to demonstrate a little bit of flexibility. But these are again, you know, business by business decisions that everyone on this call has to make individually. But I think the more that we can help each other as partners out, the better it is long term for everyone's financial health. So that's kind of how I approach it. Uh, thank you. It. <laughs> yeah. Please stay here. I, know I would like to uh, give the, uh, Mr. Chetin Dujin, he's the UFTA Vice President. Chetin Abi, uh, uh, Bajlamadan Anja, please give me a moment. You know, 50 people wait in the waiting rooms. Let me. In, uh, welcome them. Uh, you know, okay. Unbelievable, you know, almost 500 people are here. 320 people still waiting. Mm Chetan Abi. Evet. Yes, so, uh, once again, uh, hi, from a uh, colleague from all over the world. And I would like to thank uh, my colleague, uh, Murtaza, for his uh, motivation meeting. He's doing these meetings inside Turkey as well, within the colleagues in Turkey. And now uh, he's doing it with the international level. So, thank you, uh, Murtaza, once again. As uh, already mentioned, uh, we are facing a very hard time in the world with this uh, pandemic, and we don't know when it will be over. And uh, as I said already, uh, number one affected industry is tourism industry, and uh, stopped uh, tourism uh, stopped most of uh, the part of the world. So uh, we have big losses. Uh, in our industry. WTO estimates a decrease of uh, 20 to 30 percent, which is about 290 to 440 million less travelers and loss of 300 to 450 billion dollars in 2020. World Tourism Council, WTTC, estimates 75 million job loss a tourism industry. But still, we cannot know if these estimations are realistic because we don't know when the countries will open their borders and airports. So, tourism industry needs to uh, stay alive during this period. So that's why uh, the countries, the governments, they are all uh, doing something to uh, support tourism sector in their countries, uh, as done in our country. UFTA, as a federation, from the beginning of pandemic and uh, from the day the airlines stopped their flights, uh, started to discuss with IATA and uh, all edges are faced. 
because especially there is so many problems about the refunds of the sold tickets. There are some solutions reached at some levels and some reg regions, and the member associations are informed about these solutions. Our association in Turkey, TÜRSAP, one of the largest associations with about 12,000 member travel agencies, is at contact with all associations, institutions, and organizations all over the world and send them a letter of uh, solidarity to 101 countries, ambassadors, and associations, asking them to share their experiences re and ready to exchange ideas and informations about industry. For the moment, that's what I want to tell. Maybe later we'll go uh, with the questions. And for now, I wish you all good health, prosperity, and better days to come soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, I would like to give them the, you know, the Mr. Eyüp Babi is the Istanbul uh, Tourism Travel Association. You know, Mr. Eyüp Babi, your microphone is open, I think. Yes, do you, do you hear me? Yes, we do, sir. All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, and uh, dear sector Mr. colleagues. Can you please hold on, you know, uh, five yeah. seconds, because we have some big people waiting at the, all uh, right. the waiting room. Let me welcome all of them. No, I'm not going to manage to linger on. 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 I'm not going to manage to uh, Bey. Tamam. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen and uh, dear sector colleagues, uh, good morning or uh, good afternoon uh, wherever you are around the world, at home or uh, working in isolation uh, at your workplaces. I'm uh, very pleased to welcome you to this presentation from uh, Istanbul, Turkey, as the Vice President of Istanbul Tourism Association. I'd like to thank uh, dear Murtaza, um, our valuable colleague and also a member of the management board of our association for arranging this gathering and also for his efforts to sprinkle uh, some positive vibes around in these challenging times. Um, it is so sad that uh, we, the tourism industry, uh, got uh, hit the hardest. Uh, but we all know and uh, have experienced uh, so many times uh, in the past that our clientele, as uh, Terry said uh, a while ago, uh, so uh, resilient and uh, do not need much encouragement to return as soon as the case comes back, even after major circumstances. Uh, traveling around the world is one of the most things for everybody, don't you agree? Huh? So, uh, one second. Excuse me, somebody had to open their microphone. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Sorry so, about that. Um, I was saying that, uh, you know, as um, Terry said um, a few minutes ago, uh, that um, our clientele is so resilient and uh, they don't need uh, too much encouragement uh, to come back. Uh, uh, even after major circumstances, uh, as soon as uh, safety comes back. So, uh, after all, traveling around the world is uh, one of the most pleasant things for everybody. Uh, 
So with the first glimpse of uh, some positive news, uh, let's be ready to assist our clients again and lay in front of them some uh, unique experiences. Unique experiences, uh, you know, uh, in fact, is the trend of today in the travel world, uh, as we all know. And being an ambassador of the city of Istanbul, I'm very proud to say that this city is truly unique in that regard. Uh, no doubt you know that Istanbul is the only city in the world settled on two continents, Europe and Asia. And it has also been the capital of the uh, late three empires, um, um, Eastern Rome, Byzantine and Ottoman. And it was at the final point of the ancient Silk Road. Uh, people visiting this city feel this mosaic in every direction, um, heritage, um, architecture, uh, food, shopping, entertainment and the way of life. So what this city of 3000 years of history offers is the very meaning of unique experiences. Um, uh, colleagues, every year MasterCard puts together its uh, Global Destination Cities Index, uh, which ranks uh, 200 cities around the world uh, based on how popular they are with tourists. Uh, the survey not only takes into consideration the visitor numbers and the uh, travel spending data, but also predicts where people will be visiting within the next year which is, of course, not relevant uh, anymore for this year. But according to the company's 2019 index, Istanbul has been the eighth most popular city uh, of the world by the foreign travelers, right after the seventh, New York City. Um, we are uh, very confident that as soon as the world returns to its course back again, uh, we will even climb higher in this ladder and uh, look forward to welcoming you and your guests too in this exciting city. Uh, thank you once again for your participation today. Let us all be positive, optimistic, keep a high spirit, and I wish you all safe, healthy, and prosperous future days ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Reeb. Uh, please stay here, you know, we have uh, some more speakers, we may have questions. Uh, Mr. Terry, you have time, yeah? Thank you, thank you, sir. Now, you know, uh, Turkey uh, Tourist, uh, Tour Guide Association, you know, are you here, Mr. Suat Bilal? Mr. Suat Bey, are you here? I just saw you are here. Suat Bey, do you have some? Can you hear me? Yes, we do. All right. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all of the participants from all around the world. Let me introduce you myself. I'm the president of the Union of Turkish Tourist Guides Associations. And we are serving uh, in more than 40 different languages to the tourists who are coming to Turkey. And we have uh, colleagues uh, that are numbered above 10,000 people which are all unemployed now, <laughs> as the rest of us, as the rest of the sector, maybe, I can say. And we are looking forward to see your guests and also Turkish visitors all around the world as soon as possible. We believe that this can be one of the biggest crises in the world's history. Who knows, maybe after a century, it will be a crisis remembered bigger than the Second World War. We are not sure yet, but also in a day's moment, we can just wake up to the date with the new vaccine, which can resolve all of the problems that we have. But these are also high level hopes that we are carrying on with ourselves. And in this process, we are working to get financial supports from the Turkish governments for our colleagues as the rest of the tourism sector right now. And uh, I like to say that I'm very confident that people, as soon as this uh, problems crisis solved, as soon as it's a salt, people are going to travel and live more because this is also a reminder to all of us is that the life 
is not so stable that we are not sure that we have another day to live on. So everyone, especially the ones who are waiting for us in their houses, in their homes, are eager to see more and more all around the world and explore more about the world and also uh, experience more about, about the world. We have an idiom for this. Unforgettable experiences will make our day and sector more and more important for the people who would like their life to be lived worthy. So in that sense, I think we need to keep our spirits high and uh, we need to cooperate more than we have ever done. Uh, so I would like to thank all of the participants, uh, our mayor from Bodrum. I would like to thank Ter Terry. I would like to thank Mr. Chatin and also Mr. Ayub from all of the associations. And I would like to thank all of the participants from all around the world again. And if there will be any questions, I'll be here waiting and listening to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stoat. I really appreciate uh, your time and your visit here. Okay. And uh, surely you will have a question the, with all the speakers. Now, I would you like to give my microphone to Mr. Zainal Kluci from Bodrum, you know, and uh, he, uh, he is also in Istanbul. Mr. Zainal, please tell us, you know, we know that, you know, what's going on, you know, COVID-19, you know, virus, and then the, everybody, you know, understand something. Please tell us, you know, uh, what is 2021 waiting, you know? Do you think, you know, uh, from September, the tourism will be okay? <coughs> uh, yes, please. Hello. Yes, please, we are all here. Hello, Mr. Terry, and hello, Mr. Aras. And hello to everyone. I am joining this meeting from Heart of the Turkey, which is called Tourist Paradise Bodrum. This kind of meetings provides great happiness for all of tourism professionals. The COVID-19 has influenced our country and Bodrum Peninsula, as well as like all over the world. We are less affected than the other countries with the speed and impressive measures taken by our government and our Minister of Health. Tourism dynamics of our country and region show that we will cover this pandemic very fast. The quality service we offered in our country and in Bodrum is a primary reason for a quick recover after pandemics. Our hotels and our other service sector business have completed their reason preparation and are waiting for the pandemic to end. I believe that our country will survive COVID-19 from late May or early June and will start in our season straightly after that time. I know a lot of people joined this conversation meeting. That's why I just want to talk very shortly. And I want to say thank you for giving me a chance to join this chat meeting, Mr. Murtaza. Respect to everyone, and I wish everyone a future without a pandemic. Thank you very much, Mr. Terry and Mr. Aras, Mayor of Bodrum. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Actually, I have questioned uh, Mr. Chetin, uh, you know, uh, because he uh, vice president of the UFTA, of course, he's in Turkey, yeah, and then there are many tour operators all around the world, and they are expecting some word, you know, uh, when is the Turkey tourism will be ready? Uh, greeting Mr. Uh, Chetin. And please tell us to all our colleagues from the, all around the world, they are here to her. 
uh, about uh, more about the Turkey and then there are two things. Uh, do you think they should tell only 2021 or do they should tell in the, uh, from the June, July or August? Please tell us something more. I wish I could. <laughs> As Terry already told, <laughs> I wish I had this crystal in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Look at it and tell you when it will start. You know, uh, it's uh, really very hard to say it because we don't know when this pandemic will be over from the world. And don't forget that our uh, potential uh, markets, especially Europe, they are having very hard days and uh, they have very uh, big number of deaths. So uh, it's really, really very hard to tell about the timing. And uh, even when the pandemic will be over, we don't know still how countries will act when they are going to open their borders, when they are going to open their uh, airports. So uh, I can only wish. The any opinion, will be like, you know, really soon. any opinion. <laughs> That's, that's that's what I can say, Murtaza. I cannot tell you that it will be June, July, or uh, August, really. But yeah. of course, uh, we should all have to be uh, think good. The results will be good. Uh, thank you very much. Now uh, I would like to give them uh, our bottom mayor here. Maybe you know because uh, he got a lot of things to do. Uh, Başkanım. Mayor of the Bodrum. Uh, yes. Hi, everyone, again. Thank you. Uh, I have to leave. Uh, I'm very sorry. I have to leave now. Thank you uh, very but, much. Uh, I want to say something more. Thank you. I want to say something more. Uh, now uh, we are uh, preparing a new report about uh, sectors who affected from COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, in Bodrum. Uh, now, uh, uh, we all uh, being together and uh, we are uh, preparing this report with uh, our, uh, you know, friends, uh, this report, and we uh, will give uh, this report to government and also uh, municipalities or uh, the other, uh, the other uh, authorities in uh, Turkey. Uh, now uh, we are uh, ready for it and uh, we are preparing for it. I want to say uh, something and uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, all people uh, to this conversation and uh, I uh, had uh, I had uh, uh, very important information uh, from this conversation. Thank you uh, Mr. Kalender and uh, I wish uh, in a short time, we uh, will be together again, uh, face to face in this time, uh, and this pandemic will be over, and uh, we are again uh, face to face, like friends, and uh, uh, had some drinks together. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bodrum Mayor, Mr. Ahmed. I really appreciate you to be here. Thank you. And Mr. Terry will come to Bodrum for sure. Uh, we, will, we will host him. At the night hotel, resort hotel. Yes, of course. And uh, maybe the one of the good yacht cruises. Bodrum is very famous with the yes. Gulet cruises, Mr. Terry. Uh, we promise we will host you here. Of course. Am I right, sir? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sure all of you have a little more time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, we have a little presentation, you know, who we are. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Hakan will do the presentation. Uh, only take five minutes, maybe. Mr. Hakan, are you ready? Uh, hello, everyone. This is Hakan Turkom from Travel Shop Turkey, and I work for, of course, uh, Mr. Mutaza Kalender, who has organized this meeting with all of you. I, I work for workshop department. And, uh, I'm the one in the kitchen uh, working on the mice events and uh, fam trips and all. Of course, it's the seas, but it's coming back with a lot of surprises for the following period. And we have a little presentation to make here just to give you, you know, a little motivation. And here we go. We, and I personally would like to welcome you all to this little presentation. And uh, 
Mr. Mutodo? Yes, one is a second, please. One minute, please. Okay, uh, we would like to start by saying that well, uh, we wish uh, you don't let yourself down, do not exhaust yourself in this situation. Life is great with a little bit of moderation that we're, we're, we're trying to keep on going. Uh, how come, one second please, somebody waiting, how come one minute please, yeah, how come, please okay. please. okay. We got uh, 30 people waiting uh, here. Uh, let them calm down here. Come in. One second. Hello from Vietnam. Uh, Dan, please wait, yeah? <laughs> Hakan? Yes, sir. Uh, Welcome back, everyone, again. Hakan, just a second, please restart, Hakan. Hakan, restart your voice call. Okay, I think uh, I'm back on track here. Yes, please, go ahead. Okay. Hello again, this is Hakan Turkol from Travel Shop Turkey. I work for Mr. Mutaza, who has organized this meeting. And uh, I have prepared a lot of something uh, as far as uh, moderation and morale issues go. And uh, here we go. We would like to welcome you all to this little presentation. I hope you bear with me for a few minutes. Do not let yourself down. Do not exhaust yourself. Life is great with a little bit of moderation. Keep on going with tourism on your track. <laughs> Yes, we tourism professionals are the only vocational group that connects the continents and bring different cultures together. Akan? We tourism professionals, we, I think we have skipped that one, the blue one, I think, sir. Well, we, are here on, we are not only tourism professionals, we are uh, motivational master as well. Yes. Here. We are the only people that bring different countries, citizens, under the same roof to have fun, make them socialize with them, making them happy on even honeymoon trips together as tourism workers. Are you aware of the profession that we are in? Tourism is the strongest bond that makes people blend. Tourism develops upon service and grows with love. If there is a respect in tourism, then there is no worry. Tourism is a factory without a chimney. The principle in tourism is a clean nation. Water goes under the bridge, as they say, with a trace behind, as tourists will leave currency instead. Tourism is a tree that grows with service and develops on love. What is important is not the origin of a tourist, but the satisfaction of him or her. A nation's prestige spreads upon tourism's extensity. Yes, we are facing an unexpected trouble that never took place in our lives that also affects the whole world altogether. Almost all of the global flights are ceased to exist. Continents are cut off with each other, and traveling is no more globally nowadays. We may be going through tough times, but better days are just soon ahead. We can do it together. We will do it by focusing on our business without getting disappointed and breaking our morale. Staying home can be challenging, but we can create new opportunities by using our homes as home offices.
Hand to hand, we can update our websites, search on new destinations, and work on our itineraries for the better. Keep your motivation up high and never lose it. Thank you, Mr. Akam. Thank you, sir. So you can see we make the little uh, presentation. Uh, you know, we are the masters. Yeah, we make people happy. You know, uh, so please don't worry to all my colleagues. You know, uh, everything will be okay for sure. Okay. Now, uh, if you have time, Mr. Terry and Chetin and Mr. Ir, I would like to ask uh, the, our colleague if they have, if anybody have a question. Not many questions, but one or two questions, and then we will uh, close with Mr. Chetin. I think. Terry, you have time? Five, ten minutes? Yeah. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Anybody have questions? You know, hands up, then I'll, Mr. I'll, I'll, I do have a question to Terry. So, Mr. Eve, you have questions? Uh, Mr. Eve, I have a question, please. No, please hold on, then I'll give everybody, Mr. Eve, please go ahead, your question. Okay, um, Terry, um, uh, let's say that um, uh, the solution uh, to this problem has been found uh, when uh, it's uh, uh, not relevant, but when a solution is found, um, how do you think the pickup uh, speed is going to be? Is it going to be a V type, a U type, or what kind of uh, recovery uh, you are foreseeing in the travel world, not specifically for uh, any country, but around the world, is it going to pick up very sharply afterwards, uh, or is it going to take time? Or what's your uh, idea about that? So I think, um, as I indicated before, there's going to be a significant amount of pent up demand. But I think initially it's going to come from your region and your country first. Uh, and then it'll extend out internationally. Um, when I was running New York City's tourism after 9 11, uh, we put together packages for New Yorkers and, and people from the state of New York that included a hotel room a restaurant reservation and a Broadway show. And they were value focused. Um, I don't like using the word deal, but value focused. And they were extremely popular. So I think, you know, you start with your, uh, the circle that is very Turkey focused, regionally focused, uh, and then it, it, will, it will come internationally. Now here's another good piece to the story that I didn't mention before. I was actually in Istanbul earlier this year, I think January 10th or something like that for a couple of days. So I'm bringing my annual out of country board meeting of my tour operator members to Malta and to Turkey. Now, unfortunately, we were supposed to be there uh, at the end of this month and at the beginning of May, we weren't able to do that because of the circumstances, but we will be there next spring of 2021. And I know sometimes that feels like that's so far down the road, but considering what we're all going through, the fact that you'll have the leading US tourist um, tour operators there uh, is good. And the other thing I want to mention is um, we have every expectation to have our annual conference uh, December 1st through the 4th in Washington, D.C. And um, I don't know about you folks, but my members like the, the partnership, the face-to-face -face contact. So while, while this is very good and this is very helpful, what we're doing today, and I think moving forward, there, there will be a lot more of this, but reestablishing relationships in a you know, personal face-to-face -face way, whether it's later this year or early next year, I think is key. But I, you know, you're gonna see recovery come um, regionally, and then I'm gonna do everything I can, certainly for the US market, um, and it, it, it will come back. It will come back. Thank you very much. I also personally think uh, the same. Uh, the first recovery will be in the local market, I think, which will be followed by the leisure market, then business market, then the meetings market.
Uh, mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, the, the sequence is going to be in this direction, mm -hmm. and um, I don't think that it's going to be a V shape, but it's going to be rather uh, a slow pickup, starting from the local market, as you mentioned. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. Any yeah. other questions to Mr. Terry? Hello. Terry, uh, let me see. Hi, Murtuza. Let me Hello. See. One second, please let me find you because that's four seconds. Just put your hands up and I will find you. I have a question. There he is. Please go ahead. Hello. What yes, 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 please. Hello, and thank you so much for arranging this meet. You're welcome. My name is Mukaran from India. Mukaran from India. Okay, sir. I have. Uh, a question to Terry, as well as Mr. Ayu, as well as anybody who would like to answer. Uh, what kind of regulation are we expecting after the uh, opening of the market? I mean, like, uh, we, we are sure that uh, the, the world will not be the same again. So what kind of restrictions are we expecting uh, when we start doing business again? This question is to Terry or Mr. Ayub or Mr. Murtaza. I think Mr. Terry will answer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so if, if I understand correctly, you're asking what kind of regulations or restrictions can we anticipate once governments start kind of opening up again? That's and, correct, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, I'll just go back to what I said earlier. I think we as an industry family, need to have protocols that we can we can demonstrate to governments uh to regulatory bodies like in the states the department of transportation which regulates tour operators regulates uh, airlines regulates the majority of the travel industry we want to be careful that they don't over regulate and restrict us and demonstrate that as an industry, these are the steps and measures we are taking to protect travelers as they go around the globe. But um, timing wise, um, I don't know, but I think, I think we need to uh, show that we are a responsible industry. We recognize that things are changing. So let's, let's go back to September 11th. We never had, you know, the TSA, we never had screening gates that we had to go through uh, checking for metal or anything, but we've adapted and we will adapt to this new environment that we're all looking at. But I think, I think we have a responsibility to show that we're thoughtful and protecting and want to work together, you know, so that's kind of the best I can say. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Uh, so un I, unfortunately, I'm going to have to step off because I have another call right now. So thank you, Mr. Terry. We really appreciate it. Uh, I, we really appreciate you to joining us. Uh, it's, we it's want you to go in Turkey after the uh, you know the virus gone. So please come. Uh, I'll be. Face to face. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Take Mr. care, Terry. everyone. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Murtaza, in, uh, the, in regards to the question of the gentleman, I also would like to add a few things. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Terry is right. Uh, there are going to be uh, certain uh, regulations, uh, protocols, maybe restrictions, and uh, this will unfold in two ways, in my opinion. The first is going to be coming from the private sector, uh, meaning uh, we as the operators, uh, like travel agencies, uh, hoteliers and airlines, and another one would be coming from the uh, authorities, um, local and central governments. Um, already uh, at this moment, uh, many hotel uh, companies and many airlines are working on certain uh, safety uh, rules and regulations uh, in their uh, facilities 
be it a hotel, uh, be it a conference center or uh, an airline. So uh, many hotel uh, groups or many companies are already writing right now uh, protocols or policies and procedures in regards to how to make sure and guarantee uh, health uh, and safety of their clients. Um, so they are going to be diff uh, uh, differentiating from one, uh, one to another, but the uh, ro role of the uh, authorities, uh, governments or uh, local uh, authorities would be to regulate them all together. Uh, they will also take certain precautions, uh, but I think, in my opinion, uh, all these individual efforts of uh, hotels or uh, private sector companies has to be put into a common basket and regulated by, uh, by authorities. Uh, only then uh, we can give out, uh, as the operators, a single message out to the market, um, guaranteeing the safety of our clients in a very standardized m m manner. Uh, otherwise, um, everybody is going to uh, start giving the same message, uh, but with different background behind it, saying that we are very safe. We, we take the uh, disinfection or, um, uh, you know, uh, protection of our clients um, at the very high level. But what is this high level? Nobody knows how safe it is going to be. Uh, maybe one is going to be very strict. One, one hotel is going to be very strict doing that. But the other is not going to be doing it in a very strict way. So, but everybody will be saying that we are very hygienic, we are very safe. Uh, so the local authorities have to step up and now um, uh, start to bring certain regulations to this hygiene and uh, disinfection uh, issue. That's what I think. And again, sorry, we got a little technical problem. We are back again. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mr. Reed. Yes, yes. Uh, please. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I just finished. Yes, Thank please, you. Mr. Reed. Yes, yes please, Mr. Reed. I don't know at what stage I was cut, but... Uh, yeah, again, restart again. I'll restart again, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I was saying that uh, at this very moment, uh, many companies, uh, be it hotels or airlines or convention centers, whatever, uh, they are uh, very busy writing policies and procedures in regards to how to provide safety uh, and, uh, you know, hygienic uh, conditions uh, or disinfection uh, in their facilities for the, for the, for the clients. And uh, everybody is doing it in their own way. Uh, but uh, I was saying that the uh, uh, um, role of the local authorities or uh, uh, central uh, governments should be to bring a standardization to this issue because everybody is going to claim uh, once this is over that they are very hygienic, they are very, you know, uh, safe in terms of uh, health uh, of their clients and provide uh, disinfected areas and rooms to their clients. But um, how much? Nobody would know who certified it and uh, who guarantees that, uh, how much safe they are. Uh, but they will claim that they are. So uh, in my opinion, local or uh, central governments should uh, try to bring a standardization to this issue, making sure that when a message is conveyed to the uh, outside world in terms of hygienic uh, status of a hotel or an airline, uh, the message is uh, correct. There is a substance behind it. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, you know, because we, we have timing, because of whom give us the time, you know, one hour, you know, uh, 10 minutes. I would like to, uh, you know, have Mr. Chetin Virgin to, you know, Chetin, I have 10 minutes to share the last thing, you know, if we work, then we will close the, our meetings today. Uh, our next meeting on 21st April 2020. Mr. Chetin? Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Uh, dear.
uh, as we already uh, talked about, uh, we are facing a really big trouble, a big uh, problem, and uh, we all hope it will be over uh, very soon. But uh, as uh, Mr. Ayub already mentioned, after this uh, pandemic will be over, in the travel industry, so many things will be changed, especially the hotels, the air, uh, aircrafts, the conference uh, halls. Uh, they should have to have new standards that uh, they are safe uh, in health-wise. So uh, we are going to have very uh, new uh, steps in our and now uh, we have to uh, think about all this. And uh, as uh, again, uh, Mr. Abe mentioned, some hotels, some uh, organizations, they are started to do uh, this. Wow. At the end, we believe that this will be in uh, government level that uh, the standards you are often accepted from the government of the country uh, source uh, market country so that uh, they can send their uh, people so we are going to have uh, big differences you know after this pandemic will be over and we should all uh, try to be ready for these changes once again, I wish uh, you all good health okay. and to come very, very soon. Thank you. Don't do that again, no, it's not good. Hmm? Hi, Morteza, can I have one question? Murtaza lost. I think you can go ahead, Nina. Uh, Murtaza maybe is not online, but as you said, you have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, really, uh, I would like to say uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thank you for a nice speech, and I have a lot of notice. My question is about, like, today I started to think about the position of Austria, because Austria, they started to give uh, COVID-free uh, passports from the May 2020, um, because this is, like, I believe what is really important to talk, because if it will work and it will be necessary for each person to have a COVID a passport, it's as well a new uh, thing to think uh, for the travel agents, for the airlines, and for everybody. I don't know if you heard about this COVID uh, passport or no. And what is your opinion about this one? Because they want to uh, give the passport on the two position to make it four days before the travel uh, test uh, from the nose. Or another uh, option is to take the blood and to see if uh, you pass through the uh, COVID-19 or no. And um, what after to do, you know, if you will um, ask for everybody to have passport COVID-19, that you are the client is free from COVID-19 or no. Because this is something new what is in my mind from today, because I was checking the information from Austria. What is your opinion? Uh, Nina, I think this is a great idea, in my opinion, personal opinion, and uh, will be really uh, a great assurance uh, for the establishment uh, accepting uh, these guests from Austria. But what about uh, the other countries or uh, the other nationalities uh, who are coming to Austria without uh, such thing? Uh, in order for this to work, uh, in my opinion, it, this should be on an international level, maybe organ or maybe coordinated by who? The World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. uh, as well, the clients who will go to Austria, they have to have COVID passport. So it will be for the Austrians and as well for the uh, travelers to Austria. And I was reading on uh, the blog of one uh, mice uh, organizer 
that uh, in China, it's now they are working in the ideas of that they have to have the COVID uh, free passport and as well after they have to stay in quarantine for 14 days. And this is like big question, this quarantine for 14 days, because if it will be necessary that if somebody wants to travel and after the traveling, you have to stay in quarantine for 14 days, after the people, they will better to not travel. Exactly, because it is going to be a big burden uh, for the traveler to stay at home Hello. after Hello. returning to home for 14 Hello. days. Um, this is my biggest problems, you know, it's really nice what you said that first it will be the local tourism and business mice and after leisure. Uh, to be honest, I still think that it will open Hello. generally, Hello. not only for the regional, because generally, you know, a lot of people, they work in tourism and a lot of people, they used to travel abroad and now it will be everything stuck. I don't believe in this one still, yeah. but it will be necessary to take some regulation, but it will be really difficult for the hotel, for the authorities, for everyone to find the solution what to do, you know. Because if the, if the travelers can be only uh, travelers with COVID-free passports, after important thing is to think another way that these travelers will ask from the hotels and airlines to be COVID-free as well. But you need to remember, sorry, just one opinion even because uh, we need to remember Hello. there is not just the airlines. So we'll be crazy if Austria, let's, let's pretend just an example that Austria put the COVID passport. Okay, who is going to control that in the airports? And the ships who comes with the people from the cruises and the buses. This will be even complicate our industry to, uh, too much because uh, to have a, a, a passport, they need people to control as well. Can you imagine the queues in the airports, in the, in the, in the borders, and even from the ships who comes in the cruises? This will, will be totally a nightmare. Thank you. Hello. I, I think... Uh, hello? Come on. Hello? Come on, go ahead. Hi, man. Hello. Hello. Can I go ahead? Hey, go ahead, man. Really, uh, thank you for your uh, opinion because I have two offices. I have an office in Slovakia in Greece, and for the reason that Slovakia is close to Austria, from today I'm thinking about this COVID free passport because if it will be passed through, it will be really Nina. difficult for all of us. Huh? Nina, can you hear me? Right. Nina, can you hear me? Nina? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. A COVID free passport, I think so. It depends upon the uh, countries, various countries. Country may have the screening at the airport. Hello? Yes, I hear you. Yeah, country may have the screening at the airport. So the people who are traveling from Austria or coming to Australia, they have to pass through the screening. But you know, it will be if it will be passed in one country, this COVID passport, it will be after for as well for the other countries. Because the people they will scare and they can ask for this one so i think that if they start to think about the covid free passport it will be not only for austria but it will be general can i say yes, something I said, you know it's should right. be organized should be coordinated internationally so I think at, the, at the moment is different when you bring given into to the conversation this will uh, this will this seems like you know we, we will be going over and over again let's uh, keep our thoughts perhaps until you know the next meeting uh, I think Mr. Murtaza here has a bad connection uh, where he resides, so I would like to thank you for all uh, on behalf of him. Mr. Mr. Hakan, Mr. Hakan, please. This session, you if you don't mind. Mr. Hakan, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I do hear you. Well, uh, you all was talking regarding the tourism uh, uh, industry and what's going on with uh, COVID-19. 
Mm -hmm. All the COVID passports, all this is okay and all right. I agree with that. But the, the most important thing you are not talking about is the airline companies. There is, is there any representative for any airline company? Because without the airline companies, we can't have any COVID passports. Or yeah, the reason of been having all this conversation is to have every body of the sectors and every elements of the tourism industry involved in this and i took already my note about having a, a you know thy or any other airline company represented on our next sessions okay so i appreciate all of you for attendance and we see you uh, on the next session perhaps and uh we would like you to yeah, just keep healthy and keep safe indoors have a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.